With the GT40 now sold and me not quite being ready to let you guys know what the next big car build is going to be, I need a little intrigue project to keep myself busy. So in today's episode, I build myself a powder coating oven. Jumping onto Facebook Marketplace, I found someone local who was selling an old double oven that they were removing from their kitchen. I paid about 30 pounds for this, I think it was. Once back in the garage, I then started to carefully take the thing apart. The only bits I need out of this were the heater elements and obviously the control panel fascia. So making sure that I was keeping track of where all of the electrical connectors um, plugged into, figuring out what I could do away with, I slowly started to strip the thing to pieces. So now I've got the oven stripped down, I can now turn my attention to that great big thing that you can see behind me, which is, it's a big metal filing cabinet, which is going to become the oven. Now, you can see this thing is absolutely huge, which you kind of think isn't a bad thing, but when you think about the actual logistics of what I'm going to be powder coating, small brackets, trim pieces, etc., etc., this thing is massive, and I want to put it on the end of the workbench. So what I actually want to do is probably cut 30 centimeters out of the height of this. So the top of the cabinet then lines through with the top of the workbench. So I need to figure out exactly how I'm going to do it because I've got the very basic locking mechanism to the door I've got some little um, hinge pockets that will need to be refabricated when I have cut the doors down. And yeah, basically just start making it into an oven. Right, so now I've completely dismantled the cupboard, I need to really come up with a proper plan of what I'm going to do. And I think I have, I'm going to cut it, it works out I need to cut off 400 mil so I'm going to cut that off from the bottom of the side and rear and front panels so when the cupboard is reassembled the top looks like it's not really been touched and all of the cut work is then at the bottom of the units which you hopefully won't see when it's in situ next to the workbench so what I'm going to do now is get the 400 mil marked out at the bottom of each of these panels and start cutting some of these panels down. Taking my time to cut the panels down nice and carefully, keeping everything as straight and as square as possible. Once everything was trimmed down, I could then start to reassemble the cabinet, understanding how it could all bolt and fix back together with it now shortened in height. What you can see there behind me is the finished framework of the cabinet. It's all been screwed together actually. I've not had to weld anything on it. I've reused all the brackets, trimmed down the side. Now what I think I need to be getting on with is getting the doors in place. Um, the doors are over here and you can see, let me just put this down and then step back. I've got a mechanism that I need to modify I've got a little hinge catch, little spring hinge catch that I need to sort out um, and some holes along the top so it then all um, pins into place. So there's going to be a little bit more work involved in these. I want to fold a return edge over the top here um, when I do cut it down. So yeah, there's going to be a little bit more faffing around on these doors unfortunately than I initially wanted but you know, I want to do this once and do it right, in possibly, um, but certainly end up with something that I'm happy with and that I want to use for years to come. Cutting down the doors was nice and straightforward, just making sure I went through the double brace on the backside nice and cleanly. Once I'd done that, I was then able to form the return edge to then put some stiffness back into the door itself. 
and finally welding the return edge to the main structure to make it as rigid as it once was. So a combination of having a couple of dead camera batteries and me just wanting to crack on with this cupboard. Um, I'm now checking back in with you and there is quite a lot to actually show you. Um, things have progressed a heck of a lot since that last bit of me doing the initial welding to the door. So I got the door welded up and fitted into place. I've got the linkage modified so the door now locks. I then also cut down the second door and got that fitted into place. So instead of you just looking at me telling you about what I've done, I can actually show you. And here it is. So both doors fitted into place and working as they should do. So you can see here the return edge that I spoke about fabricating. Um, the left door isn't quite as good, um, but I will possibly do a bit more body working to that to um, get it pulled into shape. But those are the doors done and dusted. So that actually forms the shape of the cabinet. Now, what I'm sure you have seen is the fact that I have fitted the um, oven elements into the bottom of the uh, cabinet. It's, these heater elements are sat on a raised platform. There will be insulation underneath there. And also the elements are um, stood off of this metal plate. You can see the element on the right, I've fabricated up some top hat brackets <clears throat> and the element on the left already came with that horizontal bar that you can see uh, fixed to the underside. So that will stop any heat absorption into the plate below. The actual plate that you see there will be lined with um, some foil reflectant, um, well, actually tin foil, if I'm honest. Let's stop, stop trying to dress it up. So again, that will help um, heat radiate up into the cabinet. You can also see dangling down the side are the uh, thermostat probes. So because I'm using both the elements, I'm using both the probes, I could possibly try and muck around with the wiring to get it working off of one, but I hate wiring. So this works, um, so I'm going to stick with it. So that leads us nicely on to something that I haven't covered at all yet, and that is the actual wiring of the oven. Um, you can see here, I've just got the main fascia plate just sat on top of the cupboard. It is going to be in this um, position because like I've said before, the cabinet will be going in that corner there. So this fascia plate will face outwards. So I've managed to strip away a lot of the wiring because I'm not using any of the grill element which was on the right hand side there and also this oven was fan assisted um, and because I'm not using the fan I was able to do away with all of that associated wiring. So I still need to carry out some modification and um, get this fascia looking nice and fitted to the cupboard. I'm going to cut it down and form some returns and bits and pieces, form a lid and a back etc. Um, but it is working. You can see there's the wiring down to the uh, pair of heater elements. All of the existing wiring has just been used and either shortened or um, extended. Here you can see the two lights that I still need to drill um, holes for in the back of the cupboard. Um, one either side, the other one will be going over there somewhere. Um, but those wires have been cut to length and set. I had thought about putting uh, glass in the front of the cabinet into the doors. Um, I've seen quite a few people do that. Let me spin the camera back around. But I can't really, well, at the moment, thinking about it, I don't really see the benefits. Um, well, I can. The benefit is you can see when the powder starts flowing out, which is when you know it is then curing. Um, but you can also do that just by opening the door very quickly. Yes, there will be a certain amount of heat loss, but that would soon build back up pretty quickly, especially with the amount that I'm going to insulate this cupboard, which I'll get onto uh, very shortly. So just at the moment, 
oh, there's there's the insulation that I'm going to be using. You can see there that I've got the, the oven doors saved because I was going to use them. But I think that it's, it's gonna be a pain in the backside, trying to get them fitted nicely, trying to frame out something. The, the, the benefit doesn't outweigh the hassle of doing it. So next stage will be, yeah, finish mucking around with the um, fascia plate for the uh, dials. Let me crack on with the remaining jobs and I will catch up with you very shortly. So I've got the fascia folded up and scotch bright just to tidy up the corners somewhat. I made a top piece to cover the internals so when you're looking, so this is basically what you're going to see at the side of the workbench. So all of the wiring is covered, just made a little top panel that I've riveted into place. Here you can see everything on the back side. Um, I've tidied the wiring a little bit more so it's looking pretty reasonable. Coming round the back, I have drilled the holes for the lights that are going to go in the back there. And then on the inside, I have started to put in the foil um, insulation. So this is the first layer that I'm doing in between the braces of the panels of the cupboard. I've not done the doors yet, obviously, as you can see. Um, then I'm going to do another complete wrap on the inside. So there'll be two layers on the back side. I'll do the same thing for the doors. Fingers crossed this whole idea works. If not, it will be um, back to square one and I'll be putting a mineral wall with a second skin of steel. But I'm pretty close to giving this a proper test fire, getting it up to speed and then just see what happens to this foil insulation and also the heat tape. A few moments later. More steps closer to getting this thing done and dusted. So let me get you caught up on what's been going on the last few hours. So the outside, well, don't really need to talk about that. Inside, we have now got the doors back on and the doors have been lined with well, three layers of the um, insulation so those are now back on had to make a little cut out for the latch mechanism the other side's now on everything taped up and looking nice and tidy on the inside i've got some racks or the old um, oven racks where i made a very simple little bracket to screw it to a portion of the double skin frame so i don't punch it through the top um, so those will be my hanging racks um, for the parts Lights are in, can't remember in the last piece whether the lights were on or not, but those are all wired up and sorted out. So I'm now going to give it a proper test drive and get this thing up to temperature just to see how it actually performs. 12 seconds later. So the oven is now up to temperature. Both the lights have gone off on the control unit. Now just going round this thing, yeah, the, the top, I would say the top feels like a, a hot radiator, you know, no, nothing more than that. Around the edge of the doors, as you would expect, there's a fair bit of heat escaping there, so I may look at some sort of seal to try and improve that. The actual doors themselves are warm, if that, so those have worked out very well. Um, and then around the side, yeah, it's, it's, it's hotter at the top as you would expect with heat rising and then down the bottom it's basically warm to touch. Same on the back, there you can see the lights working. So, as it stands at the moment, the insulation seems to be doing a pretty reasonable job. Now, obviously what, uh, what I do want to show you guys is actually inside. So let's open the door. And there you go. Obviously, I'm hit with a ton of heat, which you won't have a clue about. But there you go. The oven is working and the insulation seems to be holding up. Which I'm very happy about, but I think, you know, time, time will tell 
whether it uh, whether this tape holds up or or what. But I think I'm in a position to uh, to try and powder coat apart. So let's have a go at that. So the actual powder coating gun that I've bought is by a company called Electrostatic Magic here in the UK. Now you can jump on their website. They do have a YouTube channel, although there isn't a huge amount of stuff on there. But what there is on YouTube is, is a, loads of videos of people who have bought this kit um, and they do give detailed reviews, detailed how-tos on how to use it. So what I'm going to do is I've got set up just down here on the bench is um, just a, a, an old bracket that I've cleaned up and I'm going to basically give it a try um, just to see how I get on. So I've got my compressor set up and I've got the regulator set to about eight to 10 pounds per square inch of pressure because you don't need to blast out the powder. It only needs to sort of mist or, or puff out onto the part. So there's a very low requirement of um, air that's necessary. And now I've got my oven set up and in place, which again, I'll show you the very final results just in a second. You'll see how, it, how it's all sort of come together and I'm, I'm going to be very interested about how this part does actually turn out. Right, so now the part is in the oven, um, what you need to do is actually let that part get up to 180 degrees. That will then start letting the powder flow out. Then once it's up to the 180 degrees, you then need to give it uh, a full 10 minute cook. I've got a laser temperature gun, um, so I can check that the part is up to temperature. I can then set the timer for the 10 minutes for that final curing period. So what you can also see is obviously I have given the uh, oven a lick of paint so it matches in with the workbench. I've tidied up around the um, instrument panel so everything now looks nice and it sort of fits in with, with the garage. 11 minutes later. So the big question is, is how did these parts turn out? I actually did a couple in the end, but let me show you this first one. If I can get the camera to focus, there you go. So as a very first test piece, you might be able to pick up there that uh, there's a little bit of orange peel in the part. It's a satin black powder, so I'm, I was never expecting like a full gloss finish, but there is a little bit of orange peel in, in this part. So I wanted to have a second go just to, just to change up a few things. So what I did do is grab another um, bracket that I had kicking around and I baked this at the slightly higher end of the curing range, probably 180, 190, and left it in the oven a little bit longer. And this gave me a much smoother flow out to the powder coat. So that's a, an interesting lesson that I'll take forwards uh, when I start making you know, proper, proper parts um, for the for the car. The other thing worth noting was I could have prepped these parts much nicer before applying the powder coat. Um, what I did do was give them a scuff up with some 120, um, but I didn't clean them with any sort of acetone. And it does say, you know, really get these parts clinically clean. So again, that's a, another step that I could go to to hopefully get yet better results on any powder coat coating that I do in the future. That basically takes us towards the end of this video. Um, this is my homemade powder coating oven and powder coating system. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, the next one coming up is going to be car related and it is going to be revealing what the next project car will be. So I hope you stay tuned for that one. You've enjoyed this one and I'll catch you soon.